What a glorious morning it is today. Let us start our worship by gathering in. And let's start off by singing Sweet, Sweet Spirit. It's page 261 or on the screens. And after we get done singing, just reach out to your neighbor, give them a welcome, give them a nice hello. morning. You may be seated. Welcome to those who are viewing us online and those who are sitting here in our sanctuary. What a beautiful, sunny, bright Sunday. And have you noticed that God's using his paintbrush out there? The trees are changing. Uh, this is the 22nd Sunday after Pentecost. Um, be sure to uh, register in the pew pads and those at home. Be sure and uh, sign into the chat room so that we know you're, you've joined us. Uh, I have one announcement. Uh, calling all veterans. There is a veterans lunch uh, sponsored by Brandywine Creek Chapter of the Daughters of the American Revolution. It is October 30th from 10 to 2 at Park Chapel. To RSVP, there is a flyer uh, out by the office doorway uh, with two uh, places where you can RSVP, and so we'd like to see all of you veterans come join us, and there'll also be a veterans fair. Other announcements? Good morning, I'm Diana Foreman. If you were here last week, I talked to you about the Halloween trunk or treat. Well, it is this Saturday which is the 26th from 2 to 4, and I am so excited. We have so many goodies over there that people have contributed, so thank you so much for contributing all of that. We will use it. Last year we had over 200 kids come through, so believe me, we will use all of it. And we can take more this week if you happen to bring in into the church. That would be great. Also, I'm so excited we have, let's see, six Almost seven people signed up to bring their cars and line up here to hand out the candy to the kids. And if you remember, we are doing this in conjunction with Bradley United Methodist Church. They have the trunk or treat and we have it here and so we send kids back and forth. So there is a change this year because of our construction around our parking lot. We will probably find another place to set up. So stay tuned if you've signed up or if you're interested and you are gonna sign up. 
We are looking at whether we will line up along East Street on the west side here or just go to Bradley Church and do it all with them. So I'm sorry, I, I looked out there to see if there was any path for the kids to go through and there is no path and we don't want to send them in the street. So we do have to figure out where to place our cars. So anyway, thank you all so much for your help in participating in this. Guard? Are you the guard? I am. Okay. <laughs> Seems like I'm always following her. You like it. That's right. <laughs> I've been doing since we were in high school. Uh, I feel safe. That's right. You feel safe. Well, I am probably going to not make this announcement every week, but at least through the end of the month, uh, we will be out in the parking lot trying to assist you to get to where you need to be. Um, First off, uh, last week, I uh, may have been a little harsh in my comments, but uh, uh, I will say that I'm grateful for all the things that uh, we've received with the city. Uh, my my uh, issues were only with one person, so uh, I'm appreciative of all the things we've received and uh, will continue I, the great relationship that we have. Uh, secondly, uh, I will say this, uh, there are people in this country that are a lot worse off than we are. Uh, you don't have to look very far. And what we have here are inconveniences, not problems. Uh, we may have to walk a little farther. Uh, other things that have crept into our world with what's going on outside the church. Um, but we'll get by. And so, uh, They've kept me up at night a little bit, but I've chose to deal with it, and I ask you to also. We'll get through it. Uh, it it's not the easiest thing in the world, but there are worse things. We've got our homes. We've got, you know, power. Uh, we've got a lot of things. So please join me in dealing with it. Thank you. Are there any other announcements? Susan. I don't know if you've seen flyers or heard anything, but the community choir is putting on a, all Disney and desserts today at Bradley Hall at four o'clock. It's songs from Zippity Doo Dah all the way to the new ones, Moana and Encanto. So hope to see you there. Bye. Any other announcements? Jay? Do you have an announcement? Yes, I do. Oh, okay. Anyone that's going to be interested in, or wanting to play handbells for Christmas, um, please let me know so I can get a count to find out if we will have enough ringers in order to play. So if you're considering, or I would like for you to consider playing um, the bells this season, please let me know. Thank you. Any more? Okay, Jay.
Good morning. Please join me in the call to worship. Come, let us worship the Lord our God, whose love quenches our thirst. We are parched and thirsty for God's healing word. Let us open our hearts to God, who calls us by name. We come seeking a reconciled relationship with God. Please join me in the opening hymn, How Majestic Is Your Name, All Verses. join me in the invocation. Gracious Father, you're a light in life, grace and mercy, just and right, and filled with love and power. Let our hearts draw near to you today. We seek you with all our hearts because we know that our desires are found and fulfilled in you. We want to know you, Lord. Amen. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> I will be singing Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing today. blessing to my heart to sing with grace streams of mercy never ceasing call for songs of loudest praise teach me some melodious sonnet sung by flaming tongues above praise the mount I'm fixed upon it mount of thy redeeming love here I raise to thee an altar hither by thy help I'm come and I hope by thy good pleasure safely to arrive at home Jesus sought me when a stranger wandering from the fold of God he to rescue me from danger interposed his precious blood oh to grace how great a debtor daily I'm constrained to be 
Let thy goodness like a fetter blind my wandering heart to thee. Prone to wonder how I feel it, prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart, oh, take and seal it, seal it for thy courts above. Someone said that uh, there was a time when um, there was a concert this time of year with all of the people who had talent. I don't, I don't know what that last phrase means, who had talent. But it, maybe we ought to think about that. I don't know. Um, I'll just throw that in the air and uh, see where it goes. We have a lot of talent around. And uh, folks with various instruments and voices and a couple of instruments. So we'll see. There's, maybe we can figure out a way to hear more from, from folk. 45 years, huh? <laughs> Amen. Who else is, who else is in that neighborhood 45 or above? Oh, my goodness. Raise your hands high. That's right. Well, okay, not age-wise. <laughs> Anniversary-wise. Okay, I, I should have been more clear. You still by yourself, huh? You still out painting somewhere, huh? Amen, amen, amen. That's a, that's a hard number to get to, 45. It takes a, a whole lot. I don't know what it is. I don't know for some of y'all, it takes a lot of patience. <laughs> you know who you are. Amen. <laughs> it's a blessing to look out upon you and see your smiling faces. It's it's a pleasure and an honor to be in God's house this morning. Thank you, Mary. Amen. Let's pray. Gracious Father, we are thankful for this day. We woke up and looked out the window at a new day. Sunshine and crisp air. I went out on the driveway and the leaves were crunching under my feet. I made the drive and I'm seeing some orange and some brown. The leaves are curling in the trees and turning upside down. There is a change coming. In a few weeks, we'll move the clock. Now, Lord, if, if we could just get ourselves in motion <laughs> to, to do the things that you have for us to do. We pray that as we sit in this, your house, that one of the things that we are trying to figure out is what can we, what must we as a congregation do to give you honor, to give you praise, to honor you, to serve your people. As we do our morning prayers in the mornings, as we close our days, as we get in our beds, some of us as we get on our knees to say our nightly prayers. Help us, Lord, to ask what it is that you have for us to do as a church, as a people, that we might get about that business. 
We don't hear much about North Carolina or South Carolina or Tennessee or Florida these days, not as much as we used to, but we know for a fact that there are still lots of folk without electricity, some without food or water, some still haven't been out of their little town because the roads are still blocked up. We pray, Lord, that these, your men and your women, your boys and your girls, might find a peace of mind, might find contentment in their hearts, that you would take away from them the high anxiety and give them a plan, help them to see a way out. Lord, this is our prayer in your son's name. We're also praying for all of the folk that are devastated by war, not only over there in, in the Middle East, but all over the world. There's always somebody shooting at somebody. It's, it's almost more than we can bear sometimes. Help us if, if we are in any way responsible. Last week, Lord, you had us look at do not murder. And we understand that there's all kind of ways that we can do one another harm. Sometimes it's just a look or a lift of the lip or a raise of the eyebrow that cause damage. Sometimes we say things that we shouldn't say or we imply things or we let stuff hang in the air. All of those things, Lord, are ways that we can do one another damage. Help us to be mindful. And not only mindful, but of a mind to not do that, to do harm to one another. Help us, Lord, to be more thoughtful, more caring. And we give you thanks for the men and the women and the boys and girls that are gathered in this, your house. We give thanks for all those who have gone before us, who have labored hard, who have put in the bricks and tied down the, the benches, who have lowered the chandelier, all those who have walked these halls to give you praise and glory that this house, Greenfield Christian Church, might be a place of worship, a place of comfort. We thank you, Lord, and we give you praise, and we ask that you would give us inspiration to continue to be a watchtower in this place, seen from far and wide, felt from far and wide, acknowledged as a place where God is, where God's people worship. Bless us now, Lord, as we pray the prayer that your son taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our first scripture reading is from Psalm chapter 34, verses 1 through 8. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let me humble, hear, and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he answered me, and delivered me from all my fears. 
Look to him and be radiant, so your faces shall never be ashamed. This poor soul cried and was heard by the Lord and was saved from every trouble. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are those who take refuge in him. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. <laughs> that was my, one of my grandfather's favorite words, taste and see that the Lord is good. And, and he, would, he would do that, taste and see that the Lord is good. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't get it, you know, but what he was saying was um, God's goodness to you is, is feelable. I, I, I make up words sometimes, feelable. God's, God's goodness, God's love for us is palpable. Amen. The scripture for the, uh, this morning is, is uh, in the book of Acts in the 16th chapter. Uh, I'm going to start before up there, so I apologize. I do that every week some kind of way. <laughs> apologize and... and uh, Two times, folk have yelled out, you're forgiven. <laughs> you know how, how easy that is? But it isn't, is it? <laughs> so I'm going to start at verse 6, and then at some point we'll get to where you see on the wall. <laughs> I, I, I've had a hard time um, preparing sermons, these sermons. Um, I've asked the Lord, what does he want me to say? And, and sometimes I, I think I have it right, and uh, sometimes I'm not sure. I guess the only way, well, the, the scripture says right now it's through a mirror dimly, but then it says one day we'll, we'll know for sure. And that's, that's really all I have is that um, when I die and I get to heaven, I say, okay, now Lord, when I was down there at Greenfield and I was struggling, how close was I? <laughs> Well, you're here, Webb, so that's pretty good. <laughs> Amen. Paul's vision of the man of Macedonia. They went through the region of Phrygia and Galatia, having been forbidden by the Holy Spirit to speak the word in Asia. When they had come opposite Mysia, they attempted to go into Bithynia, but the Spirit of Jesus did not allow them. So passing by Mysia, they went down to Troas. During the night, Paul had a vision. There stood a man of Macedonia pleading with him and saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. When he had seen the vision, we immediately tried to cross over to Macedonia, being convinced that God had called us to proclaim the good news to them. We set sail from Troas and took a straight course to Sumatrace, the following day to Neapolis, and from there to Philippi. I should have had somebody else read this, right? 
which is the leading city of the district of Macedonia and a Roman colony. We remained in this city for some days. On the Sabbath day, we went outside the gate by the river where we supposed there was a place of prayer and we sat down and spoke to the women who had gathered there. A certain woman named Lydia, a worshiper of God, was listening to us. She was from the city of Thyatira and a dealer in purple cloth. The Lord opened her heart to listen eagerly to what was said by Paul. When she and her household were baptized, she urged them, saying, If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come and stay at my house. And she prevailed upon us. So we'll take a picture of that first, that first slide. Okay, this is a picture of um, Paul's second missionary journey. Um, in the yellow there in the middle are those places um, in Asia, Mysia, Bithynia. That Paul was trying to go to. And the scripture says Paul was trying to go to those places, but the Lord wouldn't let him go. I don't know how the Lord stopped him, but some kind of way, Paul thought he knew what God wanted him to do. And he was trying to go that way, but the Lord said no. So, verse 7, when they had come opposite Mysia, they attempted to go into Bithynia, but the Spirit of Jesus did not allow them. So passing by Mysia, they went down to Troas, which is a little south. During the night, Paul had a vision. There stood a man of Macedonia pleading with him and saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. When he had seen the vision, we immediately tried to cross over to Macedonia, being convinced that God had called us to proclaim the good news to them. So Macedonia is in the green over there. You see where Macedonia it, it, So Troas is, is in the yellow. So that's the, between them is the Aegean Sea. There's the Mediterranean, but right up in there is the Aegean Sea. So in order to do what God told him to do, Paul had to change all his plans. I, I'm, I'm going south. I know that's where God wants me to be and I'm going to go there. But the scripture says the spirit of Jesus prevented him from going there. And as he laid down in, the, in his sleep at night, he had a vision. And in the vision, there was a man from Macedonia that said, come on over to Macedonia. We need your help. And so um, I'm going to preach this morning um, fairly briefly uh, on the subject turning point. Turning point. A turning point, okay, you can look at that. Let's look at that second. I'm sorry, then we'll be, we'll be done. So that's a little bit better. You see Mysia and Phrygia and Troas. That's where Paul was. And he had to cross across that body of water to Macedonia. Come on over to Macedonia. That was a vision. Okay, I just, just want to make it clear. I imagine that happens to all of us. We embark on a way and there's a scripture that says there is a way that seems right to us. We, we think that uh, we have prayed, we have uh, asked God, what do I do? Uh, we, we've talked to the children, we've talked to the spouse. This, this is the way that we should go. And, and, and we seem, we feel convinced that this is it. And, and then when we try, 
that way, oh, I, I thought this was the way. I, I thought this was what God wanted me to do, but it, it isn't. And um, now in Paul's case, he had a vision. So one of the questions is, and I, I wish I had a better answer. <laughs> How do we know when it is God that is directing us to do a certain thing or to go a certain place. Now, in, in, in my life as a preacher, the, the best thing that has happened to me is uh, I'll, I'll dream, uh, I'll be sitting in my office and the Lord will say, well, Webb, why don't you, why don't you uh, uh, have a, a revival service in, in November and, and call Irvin Green. That's, that's, that's a guy you know who's a pretty solid preacher. And I said, well, okay, okay, okay. But then we'll be in a meeting and uh, they'll be talking and then somebody will say, well, Reverend, I've been thinking about we ought to have us a revival. And you know there's a preacher in, in Ohio named Irvin Green. What do you think? Let's do it. That's what I call confirmation. The, 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 you, you hear something and then it, 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 here come the Lord it's like a it's, 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 it's the stamp of approval that's the best thing but, but there are times in my life when, when all I had was just a, a firm conviction that this is what the Lord wanted me to do most of the time um that firm conviction is right. But I wish I had a better answer for you. And, and um, because what I would, I, I want to do, what I think we ought to do is figure out what God has for us to do. And, and how do we do that? Well, I think what we're gonna have to do is figure out how to talk to one another and how to pray to the good Lord and, and, and find out. So as you talk to one another, these weeks, as, as time goes by, you talk to your, your spouses, as you talk to your friends, as you talk to those folk that you sit on the pew with and as you uh, read the newspapers in your city, there is a thing that God has for us. I, I don't know what it is, but um, we will figure it out in time. Now, getting back to this turning point thing. Uh, a turning point uh, is, uh, if, for those who, who are into math, the general definition of a turning point is a place or coordinate where a variable changes sign from negative through zero to positive. Now, Carolyn, you might understand that. <laughs> I don't. It, 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 it's beyond me. It can also be energy in the form of work done because when gravitational potential energy is increased, the work done on the body can be defined as negative. The work done, I'm not going to read that. It doesn't make any sense. I don't understand it. <laughs> A moment when the course of events is changed. Okay, we got that clear the turning point of a career, a point at which there is a change in direction or motion. That's pretty clear. Uh, that one is not clear. <laughs> Here's one that, that maybe somebody can answer. In surveying, a point to which a foresight and a backsight are taken in leveling. Who knows what that means? Foresight and backsight. Uh, yeah, me neither. <laughs> but I do know this. If I'm going this way and I turn around, this point is a turning point. That's fairly simple, isn't it? I'm going this way. Now, the, the, the essence of this passage today is how do we get to a turning point? 
in our lives. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, remember those three guys? Shadrach, Meshach. So what happened to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? What happened to them? Fiery furnace, and I like that because you know I don't hear well, so they spoke up. Fiery furnace. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were uh, Hebrew, Hebrew boys, and uh, they were in the service of the Egyptians, and uh, they discovered that they weren't eating like they should be, and they weren't worshiping the way they should be, and they were trying to um, make them change their ways. We don't like you doing the things that God wants you to do. We want you to do the things that Pharaoh wants you to do. They said, we're not going to do it. Turning point. Esther, Queen Esther, Queen Esther. Esther was a young Jewish woman. And by chance, she had become the queen. And, and she discovered that there was a plot against her people. And she said, I need to go to the king and tell him that there is a plot. He's responsible for it, but it's my people. I need to go to him. The only thing is, if you went before the king, the king had to extend the scepter. If he didn't extend his scepter to you, as you walked down the aisle, you were killed. So... Esther was behind the curtains trying to decide what are my people worth to me? Do I risk my life to go before the king and tell him about this situation? Turning point. How many turning points have, have you been at in your life? Somebody said something to you. You got tired of the job. Is, is it worth me leaving over these words? If, if, I, if I quit this job, is my wife going to have my head? <laughs> we were in a preacher's meeting the other day. A young preacher, he's been in the ministry about five years. And he has... Um, people with different views in his congregation. Some of them are very, very strong views. And there's a few bullies in his congregation. And he said to us, I am afraid to preach what I believe because there are people in my congregation. One guy spoke out Sunday while I was preaching. I, I, I don't know what to do and his wife was there she said one thing you can't do you can't lose that job <laughs> now what's a young preacher do you who is he subject to do do you preach what God gives you do you uh, uh, obey your wife do you yield to the bully well, we said, you know, young man, you got to give the people what God gives you. He said, but what about my wife? <laughs> That's a terrible spot to be in. What do we do when we come to places in our lives I'm tired of them folk up there at Greenfield Christian Church. I've been going 10 years. I've been giving my money faithfully. I don't like the way some of them talk to me. I don't like some of the decisions they make. I think I'll stay home. Some folks stay home and they never get back. That's a, a burden. Do we, how do we, how do we fix that? We, we are at a turning point. 
Hey, man, I haven't seen you in a couple weeks. Yeah, you know why. I don't know. I know. But, you know, preacher's been preaching pretty good. And, you know, Mary sang Sunday. She sounded good. And, and, and worship is really wonderful. Why don't you try us out? Come on by. Sit on down. I might. Maybe Jay will call somebody. Turning point. Martin Luther King was stabbed and they took him to the hospital and they told him that if he coughed, if he had coughed, it was a letter opener, if he had coughed, that point would have expanded his heart and, and it would have killed him. But yet he came out of that hospital and went on to Washington, D.C. and talked about, I have a dream. Nelson Mandela. Well, Mandela, if you keep on talking that stuff, you're going to go to prison. Well, truth is truth. And I'd rather go to prison than tell a lie or to continue like I'm continuing. Turning point. One of the things that happened when Paul went to Macedonia is that he started preaching to the Gentiles and it changed the course of history. He changed religion. He changed everything that had been this way up to that point was different from that moment on. That's the way sometimes certain turning points are. Now, I don't know about you. I don't know whether that turning point is is in a relationship you need to say something to somebody and fix. I don't know whether the turning point is in a job you're at. You, uh, all kind of things happen in the job. Do you, do you want to continue uh, to be a supervisor or, or do you want to stay and, and, and work? Uh, is, is the... Um, I, I think I, I'm to the point in my life where I like to wear a tie and a white, white shirt and supervise some people. Or I'm tired of supervising some folk. I think I want to get out in the truck and just be responsible for myself. I'm tired of folk. I'm, matter of fact, well, all kind of things. I don't know where you are. I don't know where you are. But I bet you most of us are thinking about something that is important. Now, what do you do? Pray and seek God's face. The scripture that we read says, I called the Lord, I called upon the Lord, and the Lord heard me and answered all my prayers. I called upon the Lord and the Lord heard me and the Lord answered all my prayers. Okay. I think I'm I'll say this and then, then I'll be done.
When I was a young man, I dated a woman who was a sorority woman. Um, some of them sororities are pretty, uh, they're pretty fancy folks, some of them. And I wasn't at that time. I was a guy that liked uh, blue jeans and T-shirts and Chuck Taylors. I had some, some white low boys and some black hot tops. And I thought I was, that was all I needed. I'm fine. And this sorority lady, she said, I want you to go with me to our uh, boule, the annual big meeting. But you can't, uh, <laughs> you can't go like you are, you know. <laughs> so she took me shopping. Um, bought me, I had, I think she bought my sport coat and I bought some, some slacks, some of those uh, bell bottom slacks. <laughs> and the, the nice little waistband and pink shirt, the, the, the jacket had some colors in it, and uh, Fred Feister got some of them boots I like, the, uh, I, I can't, but they're expensive. <laughs> they're very nice boots. I had some like that one time. And so I went to this meeting, and I'm standing around in, in my finery, and the women, Hey there, brother, how you doing? They were smiling at me in ways that they hadn't smiled before. I said, I don't, why did it take me so long to figure I needed to dress up to get a smile? <laughs> it was, it was life-changing. I, I spent two days dressed up. <laughs> Walking around, clean, you know, I, I, I had a second outfit. I didn't know. I, I didn't know really all you had to do to catch a smile from a pretty girl is clean up a little. I, I hope I got that lesson down. What do you need to know to change your life around? I don't know what it is. All kind of stuff happening in the city, Corey. <laughs> you got big decisions to make probably somewhere along the way. Some of them are going to be pretty significant. You're going to be a big shot. <laughs> he, he's like an everyday guy, likes that. Like to rather drive the fire truck than do some admittance. I know, I know, I know. We as a church, and I know time is up. Let me, let me finish. <laughs> what are we going to do, y'all? What, what, two things. There's turning points, personal turning points. And, and you need to figure those out and you need to ask God and talk to God. And, and, and God will hear you and God will respond to you. And, and we as a church, we need to figure out where we want to, and, and we need to bring all of us, all of us together need to do whatever we're gonna do. We need to sit down and talk with each other when we talk to each other, talk about what it is that God wants us to do. And then we need to figure out how we can get everybody and then take off on another thing. We know how to work. Riley showed us we can work. I, I saw it. We can work. We can work hard. What, what can we do? We can figure it out. We can figure it out. Take some of this energy we got and, and change our city. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. <laughs> Come on. Okay, I'm, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> I don't think I have anything else that needs to be said here. I know for sure that there are many within the sound of my voice who are spiritually distressed, who cannot, who have not yet found comfort and peace in the places where they are. 
There are many people out here, countless multitudes, who hunger and thirst for what they know not. They have empty, aching, longing hearts. Their hearts are unfulfilled, unsatisfied, and they are, this is not my quote, inarticulately, but earnestly pleading for the bread of life. We need to find those people and provide for them the bread of life. turning point, us, me, and you. Figure it out. There's something that God has for every person in this house. Oh, preacher, I'm old. I'm 76 and some of y'all older. But, but, but we, if, if it's a grandchild or a great-grandchild that we need to pull to the side and, 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 and <laughs> I bribed my children. I wanted, I wanted to see my son. He was in Texas. I said, I, I got some stuff here at the house, man. I, I need, I'm getting ready to throw some stuff away. I, I, I need for you to come and look at it. Okay, Dad, I'll be there. I, I wanted to see my daughter. I said, you know your grandma's china. I, I, do you want me to throw it out? Or, or I'll be over soon, Daddy. I don't, I don't mind bribing her. Do whatever I need to do to get them to the house and talking to them. Somebody within the realm of your life needs your help in a special way. Figure that out. Amen. 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 I'm through. Let's pray. Father, we are thankful for this day. We earnestly plead for you, Lord, as we live our lives and as we bump up against the, the barriers that come into our lives. We pray, Lord, that you would guide us, that you would give us insight into what it is that you would have us to do, not only for our families and, and our friends and, and on the job, but for uh, here at Greenfield Christian Church and, and in this city that you love, that we love so much. Help us, Lord, to figure out how we can be of service, not only in our own lives, but as the church of Jesus Christ. Talk to us, Lord. We need you. We need to hear from you. And it is in your son Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. We are thankful for this opportunity to come to this table which the Lord has prepared for us. 
everyone who has accepted Jesus Christ as a personal savior is welcome to gather with us around this table. When Jesus Christ was with his disciples in the upper room, he's, he took the bread and he broke it and he told them that the bread represented his body that had been broken for them. Then he took the cup and he told the disciples that, remember this is the blood shed that you might be forgiven for your sin. We gather around this table to remember the sacrifices of Christ. Let us pray. Dear Lord, as we praise you for our harvest of plenty, we thank you that we can depend on your presence with us hmm. in every situation and season. Yes, Lord. And at your table, with deepest gratitude, we bring forward the grain and the grape. For our Savior took bread and wine to feed us with his body and his blood, given and shed for the life of the world. We are so blessed. And in Christ's name we give thanks. Amen. Amen.
this time in our service it's a time that we thank the good Lord for all of our blessings I know we've all had numerous of those blessings this week and we know where they come from so may this be the day for your turning point in supporting our church and our community May we pray. What an amazing God we serve and we worship. You are a God of abundance. You love us. You love us more than we ever could expect. And you're always there for us. Help us in this time of our church and our community to be a turning point in its lives and our lives. We thank you for sharing. We know it will be used and it will grow enormously. In his name we pray. Amen. At this point, we would like to issue the invitation to discipleship. If anyone here would like to accept Jesus Christ as a personal savior, we will welcome you to come down this aisle to give me your hand and to give God your heart. As we sing our hymn of invitation, Jane, can we do two verses of blessed assurance? Amen. Okay. of God, one of his spirits. 
thankful to come into this house we're grateful that you have blessed us with abundance and we praise we praise you and you give you glory for all that you have given to us we want to figure out lord how to use what you have given us so that all around the world folks and men and women and boys and girls might be blessed by how you have blessed us now may god the father jesus christ the father's son and the sweet communion of the holy spirit rest and rule and abide in our hearts now and forevermore. In Christ's name we pray. Let's everybody say, Amen. Amen. God bless you, everybody. <laughs>